Good morning and a very warm welcome to St Anne's Midweek Online Reflections. It's great that you're able to join us again this week. A man had a very tiring day at work and was really looking forward to getting home, putting his feet up and relaxing. As he arrived home, he found all the doors had been broken into and everything was gone. Absolutely gutted, he thought to himself, what sort of selfish person does this to someone else's chocolate advent calendar? Advent calendars. Uh, Nikki's been and got the advent calendars for our kids this year. I'm sure many of you have already got yours ready and waiting. Advent. It's a season like no other in the church's year, isn't it? And we're heading into Advent Sunday this Sunday coming. It leads us into uh, waiting. A season of waiting with hope. My son Isaac is constantly waiting for Christmas at the moment. He's continually asking Google, how many days is it till Christmas? Which is then followed by him saying, I can't wait for Christmas. I love how children are caught up in the excitement of waiting. The experience of waiting is a common one, isn't it? And it shapes the rhythm of all our lives. We wait for things. We wait for trains, we wait for the postman, for, for payday. There's something about waiting, isn't there? It's the anticipation of the coming event. In fact, sometimes the wait is more exciting than the actual occasion because it focuses our minds more. Although the experience of waiting is common to our everyday human experience, we live in a world where waiting isn't the done thing anymore. In fact, waiting is undesirable. A failure to wait for things, it shapes our financial culture. I'm, so, I'm sure you're like me. I'm always getting letters from the bank sending me offers for a bank loan of 10 or 20,000 pounds. And not only do they offer me uh, this money, but they even kindly suggest ways in which I could spend it. A new car, a holiday. It's a sharp contrast to my mum and dad and my grandparents telling me before I got married that I should never buy anything until I'd saved up enough money to pay for it. We live in a world where we're promised that we can have what we want and we can have it now. A world of instance. But more than that, we can have it now, but we can have even what we don't need now or what we don't even think we want but these things are pushed onto us by advertising all the time so that we begin to think, oh, I really need that. I must have that. And Advent today, as we move into this season of Advent, gets us thinking about this, gets us reflecting about this. I was looking at that passage in the Bible uh, where Zachariah and Elizabeth are told that they're going to, to be expecting in Elizabeth's late age in life. And in that moment, Zachariah was forced to rely on God more and more through the, through the pregnancy that Elizabeth uh, was going to go through. And during that time, he couldn't speak. He'd been muted by God. And that must have been a really frustrating time for him, waiting so that he could speak and share again. However, how much prayer, how much communicating and waiting on God must he have done during that nine month period? And as you think about Elizabeth, we read that after this, Elizabeth became pregnant and for five months remained in seclusion. She remained in seclusion out of joy and out of devotion and out of gratitude that the Lord had taken her way, her barrenness. She devoted herself to God. She prayed and she worshipped God during those five months. How much must she have grown in her faith, in her belief during that time, during the waiting game? Jesus shows us that waiting had his own value and dignity. Advent is the invitation to wait with hope for the future that is to come. Just as Elizabeth had to wait in hope for the future birth of her son. During Advent, God invites us to learn to wait on him. 
We need to learn to hope, to rest, to pray and to wait. And that is what this season of Advent is about. It's about waiting. It's about getting ready, about getting prepared, getting ourselves right with God. Because rest assured, the King will return. No one knows when. We read in scripture that not even Jesus knows when, but it is coming. And when he comes, it will be the end of the world as we know it. All we can do is be ready for that great day when Jesus will return. We need to be in a right relationship with him so that when he comes, he will find us waiting and watching. And how can we do that? By living Christian lives right with God in the present today and onwards into eternity. By living a life of faith now, today. By living a life that speaks of Christ now, today. And by living a life of hope now, today. And so as we prepare for Advent this year, once again, we are invited to wait on God to prepare ourselves for the celebrations of Christmas and all that that means. But more than that, we are to wait for the coming of Christ, to be ready for his coming in glory. May this Advent be for us a time when we open ourselves to God, waiting, ready to trust and ready to hope. Can I also just use this opportunity to tell you of something that we as a church are joining in with this year uh, throughout the period of Advent? It's the reverse Advent calendar. You might have heard about this before. Uh, MICA Liverpool, uh, which is the food bank that we at St Anne support, along with many other churches around the diocese. Uh, MICA are challenging everyone to complete the reverse Advent calendar. What is the reverse Advent calendar, I hear you ask? Well, a reverse Advent calendar works very similar to an ordinary Advent calendar that most of us would have, but instead of opening the doors and receiving a chocolate treat each morning that you might do, uh, they're asking us to donate an item of food uh, to the food bank each day. Uh, you can download the Advent calendar, the MICA Advent calendar, from the MICA website. It's M-I-C-A-H. MICA is spelled M-I-C-A-H. Google MICA Food Bank and you can go and find all about the reverse Advent calendar there. Can you take on this challenge, I wonder? If you do decide to take on the challenge, feel free to drop your donations at Liverpool Cathedral at the designated donation point. Alternatively, you can bring your do donations to church and we will arrange to have them all collected from here at St Anne's. I hope you can uh, join in with this challenge because it will make such a difference to so many people this year. Uh, just to finish, I'll just give you a little bit of info about Micah. Uh, Micah hands out more than 200 food parcels each week uh, through its twice weekly food pantries at St Vincent de Paul Church and St Bride's Church in the city centre. Micah was set up as a joint project by Liverpool Cathedral and the Metropolitan Cathedral and St Bride's and it was set up to tackle food insecurity and to give essentials to the most vulnerable people in our city. Over the past six months it's helped over 6,000 people including well over 1,000 children, providing three-day emergency food parcels. And since the start of the coronavirus, it has relied more than ever on donations of shopping and money to meet the needs. So it's hugely important that we continue to support MICA, and I do encourage you to really think about uh, taking on the challenge of the reverse advent calendar. Let's pray together. Lord, as we head towards the season of Advent, Lord, help us to be mindful of what that means for us. Yes, a time of preparation, but more than that, it's a time of hope, of looking forward to your return. Help us to be prepared for that great day, to be in that right relationship with you now. Lord, that we might be changed by that encounter with you on a day-to-day -day basis and that you might use us to bring your love, to bring your peace, your comfort and your joy to those who we meet this Advent period. And these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Thank you for joining with us and I look forward to seeing you on a Sunday for our online service at 10.30. Until then, God bless.